Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on logical equivalence. So, just a quick recap, in the last lecture we discussed about propositional logic, various logical operators and how do we form compound propositions from simple propositions using logical operators. In this lecture we will discuss about logical equivalence and logical identities. So, remember if p then q is represented by p implies q and the truth table of p implies q is this, then the converse of p implies q is denoted by q implies p and it is easy to see that the truth table of q implies p or the converse is this. The inverse of p implies q is denoted by negation p implies negation q and its truth table will be like this. And the contrapositive which is very important for p implies q will be the statement negation q implies negation p. And if you see closely the truth tables of the converse of p implies q and the truth table of p implies q they are not same. If you see the truth table of p implies q and the inverse of p implies q are also not same. But if you see the truth table of p implies q and its contrapositive they are same that means the first row of both the tables are same, the second row of both the tables are same, the third row of both the tables are same and same is the fourth row and that is why I can say that p implies q and negation q implies negation p are the same statements, they are logically equivalent. We will come back to that point later, but let me first define a biconditional operator, a biconditional statement which for which we use this notation that means an arrow head which has uh, an arrow which has an arrow head at both the ends and this biconditional statement is used to represent statements of the form p if and only if q or in short form p if if and only if q. So, the another way another form of representing if and only if is i double f right. So, very often for mathematical uh, uh, for very various theorem statements you must have seen conditions like prove that this is true if and only if this holds right. So, wherever we are making statements of that form we are actually making statements of the form p by implication q. Another equivalent form of this biconditional statement is the conjunction of p implies q and q implies p. So, you can see that row wise the first rows first row of both the tables are same, the second row of both the tables are same, the third row of both the tables are same and the fourth row of both the tables are same. Hence I can say that this biconditional statement is same as the conjunction of p implies q and q implies p. Now, p implies q means p is sufficient for q right and q implies p means p is necessary for q. So, that is why this biconditional statement also represent a statement of the form that p is necessary and sufficient for q ok. Now, let us next define tautology, contradiction and contingency. So, a tautology is a proposition which is always true irrespective of what truth value you assigned you assign to the underlying variables. So, for example, if I consider this compound statement namely the disjunction of p and negation p then this will be always true that means, if p is true then this is true and even for p equal to false this statement is again true. That means, it does not matter whether your p is true or false this statement with disjunction of p and negation p will always be true and hence this is a tautology ok. Whereas, a proposition is called a contradiction if it is always false irrespective of what truth value I assign to the underlying variables. So, an example of contradiction is p conjunction negation p. So, you can verify that if p is false then this statement is false and even for p equal to true this overall statement is false. That means, this statement is always false for every possible truth assignment of p and hence it is a contradiction. 
whereas a contingency is a proposition which is neither a tautology nor a contradiction. That means it can be sometime true, it can be sometime false. I cannot say that it is always true or it is always false. So, for instance, if I take the statement P conjunction Q, then for P equal to A false and Q equal to false, this overall statement is false, right. But for P equal to true and Q equal to true, the statement is true. So, that is why it is a contingency. Now, what we want to define what we call as logically equivalent statement. So, before trying to understand what is a what are what is a what what are logically equivalent statements, remember in algebra or in mathematics, we often come across expressions of this form. We say, it, say for instance that a square plus 2 a b plus b square is equal to a plus b square. That means, these two expressions are the same expression. What do I mean by same expression? Well, by that I mean that whatever value you assign to A and B, the left hand side and right hand side will take the same answer, will give you the same answer, right. That is why these two expressions are the same expression. In the same way in mathematical logic, if we have a compound proposition X and a compound proposition Y, then I say that they are logically equivalent and I use this notation. This is not an equal to notation, this is uh, representation of equivalence, this is also called as an equivalence notation. So, I say that x and y are logically equivalent if they have the same truth values. What I mean by that? I mean that if x is true, then y is true, if x is false, then y is false. That means, it never happens that x and y takes different truth values. More formally, x is logically equivalent to y provided the by implication x, but so if provided x by implication y is a tautology, right. Because if x by implication y is a tautology, then it means that whenever x is false, y has to be false. Whenever x is true, y has to be true. It cannot be possible that x and y takes different values, because if x and y takes different values, then the by implication of x and y uh, will be false. And a tautology means that this statement is always true. So, this statement will be true only when both the sides of this expression or the compound propositions on both the sides same takes the same truth value. Okay. So, there are various standard logical equivalent statements which are available which are very commonly used in mathematical logic and they are also called by various names. So, for instance, um, the conjunction of P and true is always P that is called this law is called as the identity law. In the same way we have this double negation law which says that if you take the negation of negation of P then that is logically equivalent to for P. We have this De Morgan's law which is very important which says that if you have a negation outside then you can take the negation inside and split it across the various variables and if you have conjunction inside then it becomes disjunction and vice versa. Okay. We also have this distributive law which says that you can distribute the disjunction over conjunction and so on. How do we verify whether this logical identities are correct? Well, we can verify using the truth table method. Namely, we can draw, we can construct the truth table of the left hand side of the expression, we draw the truth table of the right hand side of the expression and verify whether the truth tables are the same. So, for instance, if you want to verify the De Morgan's law, right. So, the first part of the De Morgan's law says that the negation of conjunction of P and Q is logically equivalent to negation P disjunction negation Q. So, what you can do is you can draw the truth table for the left hand side here, you can draw the truth table for the right hand side part here and you can easily verify that the rows of both the tables are equivalent, they are same and that is why I can say that these two are logically equivalent statement and now I have given a name namely De Morgan's law to this logical identity. Okay. However, the truth table method of verifying logical equivalence, logically equivalent statement has a limitation. Namely, the limitation here is it works as long as the number of variables, the number of propositional variables which are there in your uh, identity or the statement is small. Right. So, in all this logical identities that I have written down in this table, 
there are at most 3 propositional variables. And if I try to draw the truth table of, uh, of a statement having 3 variables, then there will be only 8 rows which are easy to manage. But imagine I have a logical, I have a logical identity which has say 20 number of variables then the number of rows in that truth table will be 2 power 20 and definitely you cannot draw such a huge table. So, that is why it is infeasible to verify the logical equivalence of statements using the truth table method. And that is why what we do here is we use some standard logical equivalent statements. Okay. So, for instance these are some of the standard logical equivalent statements which we use to simplify complex expressions and verify whether those complex expressions are logically equivalent or not. And this is something similar to what we do in our regular maths, right. In regular maths if we have 2 expressions and if we want to simplify one expression and convert it into another expression, then we have some well known rules which we can always use to do some substitution in our process of simplifying the expressions. So, we are trying to do the same thing even in the mathematical logic. If you are given a very complex expression x a com compound proposition x which you want to show to be logically equivalent to y and you do not want to involve the truth table method. Then our goal will be to simplify the expression x and keep on doing the simplification till we can convert it till we can convert it into the expression which has the same form as y. During this conversion process or the simplification process we can use this well known logical identities by just quoting their names. We do not have to separately prove the De Morgan's law because it is a well known identity. We can simply say that okay, we are using the De Morgan's law and hence we are substituting this part with this part and so on. Okay. There are various other standard logically equivalent statements. So, these are some of them they do not have any name but they are some well known logical equivalent statements which we can use while doing the simplification. So, now let us do an example here. Suppose I want to prove that my LHS expression and RHS expression they are logically equivalent. So, this is my statement x, this is my statement y. Well, in this case I can use the truth table method because my expressions x and y involve only 2 variables and I can draw a truth table which will have only 4 rows. But what I do want to do here, I want to demonstrate here is that without even drawing the truth table, I can show that the expression x is logically equivalent to expression y by using logical identities. So, here is the proof that the expression x is equivalent to expression y. I start with my expression x. Okay. Now, what I can say is that this expression x is equivalent to this new expression and y uh, this uh, expression x is equivalent to this new expression because I can apply the De Morgan's law twice. So, what I can do is I can take this negation first inside. So, that is why I get this negation p and this negation is will be now present outside this bracket. So, that is why again I can apply the De Morgan's law and this negation when it goes inside then negation negation p becomes p and then this negation also goes to q and this conjunction gets uh, this conjunction gets converted into disjunction. Okay. Now, what I can say is that this expression which I have derived from the expression x can be further converted into this expression because I can apply the distributive law. Right? The distributive law says that you can always split the conjunction over disjunction. So, that is what I am doing. Now, I can say that this expression negation p conjunction p is equivalent to the value false. right? So, we have this identity, I am not quoting the name of the identity, but this is a well known identity. So, I can substitute this conjunction of negation p and p with false and whatever is there is left over here. And then I can apply the identity law which says that the disjunction of false with any proposition is the proposition itself. And now you can see that I started with x and I kept on applying various laws and kept on I, I kept I keep on doing the simplification and then finally, I kept I derived the expression y. And hence I come to the conclusion that starting with x I can conclude the statement y and hence the statements x and a y are logically equivalent. Okay. So, that is how we can derive uh, new logically equivalent statement from old statements by applying 
well known logical identities and why this is called a proof because at each step we are doing the following at each step we are deriving a new statement a new true statement from the collection of existing true statement okay and the sequence of steps which i have done here constitutes a is called as a proof that indeed x is equivalent to y so that brings me to the end of this lecture just to summarize uh, in this lecture we introduced new logical operators namely the biconditional operator we introduced the terms tautology contradiction contingency we defined what we call as logical equivalence of two statements to so, so two compound propositions are called logically equivalent to each other if they say take the same truth values or uh, uh, formally the by implication of x and y is a tautology we discussed various well known logical identities which we can very uh, quickly prove using truth table method and then we saw that how this well known logical identities can be used to prove the equivalence of com complex compound propositions by the simplification method where our goal will be to keep on simplifying the expression x and convert it into expression y thank you